So even like Ebates tweeted at him and he was like, 13 uh, games, four kills. He's like, you suck, reload, enjoy the long flight home and think about how dumb you look. Based, reload deficient. So people think this guy cheats. So let's, I, I have a little clip here that I'm gonna show. This is a clip I'm that glad, somebody tweeted I out. I think I probably saw, is this the one where he's shooting in the water? We are live once again, boys and girls. Welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty podcast, episode number 460. Today, we have the episode for you, bringing you all the details on season six, the, the sixth and final also season of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for BO6. 35 more days, and then we'll be omni moving. And I'm really excited about it. Kind of. Anyways, welcome <laughs> to the show. Yeah, we got the patch to go over. Uh, that's pretty much uh most of what's been going on. No real, actually, like literally nothing on BO6. But that shouldn't really be surprising to anyone because. You know, we already had COD next. We already know a lot, most things anyway, about BO6. So unfortunately, it is kind of a waiting game, but we will be here by your side every single step of the way. So we have some announcements. Stick around toward the end of the show to get into those. But let's dive right into this sucker with the season six patch notes. Now, we've kind of covered a lot of this already. Uh, and you know what? Spoiler alert, not much new going on. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't think these patch notes will take too long to cover at all. They will not, yeah, Shit because... 100 emoji, because as we've been doing lately, and as we've been saying lately, most of this was already covered in the roadmap that we already did an episode on. So we're going to go through, like, new stuff that was not talked about, that we didn't talk about, rather, uh, in the roadmap episode. Um, and again, that is not too much, but also I played a lot of season six. I played pretty much all the new stuff, used both the new guns quite a bit, um, the new LTM, et cetera. So we'll talk about those when we get to them. But anyway, let's dive in, starting with the multiplayer patch notes. I don't know if we're going to read literally any of this, but I, we'll just do a quick scroll through. There are a bunch of map variants. That's fine. Um, they look cool, I guess. Nothing really to go over there. Yeah, if you don't like regular uh, shipment, there are 10 other versions for you to play. Yeah, exactly. Um, the new guns, we'll talk about those when we go to the Warzone section here. New attachments, same. New aftermarket parts, we won't talk about at all, at least not this week, because the first week's aftermarket part is the Jack Salvo, which makes your cat AMR sniper fire literal rockets. I actually should have tried that. Uh, I did unlock it this morning, but I didn't actually bother trying it out. Can't imagine it's very good, but it does sound hilarious to shoot rockets out of a 50 caliber sniper rifle. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. if that thing was good, we would have uh, we would have seen some clips of it. Oh, by now. yeah, I think you're right. I haven't yeah, seen so. anything on it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. So it's shit is ass 100 emoji. So anyways, uh, new operators. Giga don't care. New events. Um, yeah, just the event stuff. Prestige, ranked, some bug fixes. Yeah, that's uh, it. We got some we got some operators here, though, man. Wow. Felix peaked in high school. When he wasn't playing football, he, he also wasn't studying. Okay. Okay. By uh, the way. Yeah, cool. You know what I somehow just noticed, but has been true literally all year? What? They do, and I'm dead ass... 500% more weapon balance for multiplayer than Warzone. And they've been doing it for most of, if not the entire year. Look at all of these balance changes that they've done. Like, how many guns is this? 20? 25? 30, some would say. I mean, that's a lot. 
of course, we're not reading you guys any of it. Uh, you can go check it out yourselves. It would be very boring content to do. But that's pretty much it for uh, Season 6 patch notes with respect to multiplayer and zombies, which you should not be playing. Um, so yeah, as far as multiplayer goes, I actually haven't really done much. I, I played Ghost Ship. It's shipment, but it's reskinned. Okay. Uh, I could have played the new map, decided not to, should have, though. I regret it, actually, because I would have liked to talk about it. But I heard the, the new map is good. Looks pretty cute. Yeah. Okay. Looks yeah. cute. So, other than that, we'll talk about the new stuff cool. when it comes to Warzone. So, yeah, moving on to the Warzone patch notes. Again, not too much uh, that we haven't already talked about, but there is some stuff. So, the LTM is live uh, now whatever road to terminus all that stuff uh and here we go map updates rebirth island so hellspawn is the variant that we talked about when we were covering the blog i played purgatory this morning uh it's really good by the way for doing like camo grinding weapon leveling or just like practicing warzone gunfights because the match lasts two hours so you ne don't even have to wait to requeue ever and also, you can't get squad wiped. And also, you drop in immediately with your loadout. Yeah. So if you wanted to, like, practice getting in loadout versus loadout gunfights with Warzone mechanics and health totals, this is literally the best LTM to do it by far right now, uh, which has been really nice for me because I just uh, I'm on day three on the on the roller again, on the controller again. And uh, I got like 137 kills because I like backfilled into this match and I was just constantly trying to land around people, get kills, really good practice, uh, yeah. which is really cool. But I think most of you probably don't care about that. The, the more interesting thing I think is the um, camo grinding, uh, the ease of weapon leveling and camo grinding. Uh, it's super free and easy and fun. Um, the map itself, it actually does look cool. I quite like it more than I expected to. Visibility is not great, but I mean, I don't really care. It's not like a serious game mode and it's not horrifically bad. Uh, it's almost no worse than normal Rebirth, honestly, because when people are in buildings on Rebirth, and you're not, you won't see them. So kind of the same, but like, okay. But it looks really pretty. Floating shipment is also a disappointment because... It is cool, but like, I think when it's floating, you realize how small that map is. And they're also not sea cans or anything. They're just like blocks. It just doesn't look good. I don't know. I was a little disappointed. I thought it was going to feel goofier than it actually does. But most of the time, no one's on it. It's just like. Boring. Yeah. Or once you get up there, then you just wait for people to land in and you just kill them as they land. Basically, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. They're not. Sea cans? The ones on the side are open. What are they? Is it something else? It definitely doesn't I look... Mean, you wouldn't know it's yeah. shipment. You wouldn't think it's, like, shipment, really. It, it is just, like, a floating little map. It is... It's weird, but, um... Yeah. I think it was also, like, people... kind of depends where they respawn. It's kind of hard to get to it. Like, if you... if Say you respawn and just want to float to it and land on it. You can't always do that. Because it'll be, like, on one edge of the map or whatever. I guess you can control too high, it, too. Yeah. I don't know how I didn't try. I only played Purgatory for like 10 minutes, but um, it was fun. Yeah, the map to me, um, it's a disappointment compared to other things we've had for like the zombie type Halloween modes. Um, it's I don't know. It's not that interesting. It's kind of just dark and ugly and gloomy, in my opinion. But the actual yeah. Purgatory mode is cool, <clears throat> which we'll yeah, talk it's a about cool a little bit idea. more. I never went to the safe zone either, by the way. I did. I went to the Was safe there a zone. lot of prox chatting going on? Not a single goddamn person, no. I've Nobody got talked it. To yeah, I figured. Ever. Yeah, yeah. There's just some guy staring at me, mag dumping me over and over again, and then meleeing me. Never said a word. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that sounds like a, the average Call of Duty well, safe it's, zone. It's so. weird, too, because like it's in it forces you in third person. So then when you come out of it, you automatically go into first person, and it's like, okay... Well, people just, like, are right outside it. So as soon as I get out of the safe zone, I'm getting shot at. And then also oh, I'm transitioning no. from third person to first person. Yeah. And it's like a 500 millisecond delay. So then I'm just dead by the time I even in first yeah. person. I'm like, okay, cool. 
Yeah, I've got that. But too. um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean the there are there's a cool camo you can get for playing Purgatory on um on Rebirth here, and there's a bunch of challenges to do. There's like seven between seven and nine challenges you have to do. Seems like it would take a little while, but it's a really cool looking camo, and you know if you need something to do because there's nothing else new this season. So if you want to do something, you know it's probably worth going for that camo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I agree with that for sure. So anyway, I like the mode. Uh, yeah, compared to you're right though. Like, it is not hitting the same as any Halloween event. Maybe it's just ever. old, man. It's run its course. That's what I'm, they need to just do like a big Christmas event instead. I'm over the Halloween stuff. It was really cool the first time. It was kind of cool the second time. Like this is the fourth time now. Just do something else. Do another cool yeah, event. Yeah, do it for Christmas. That would be good. Cover the map in snow, cool. please. Do anything, man. It's just, this is not that interesting anymore. Yeah, it's also way worse than last year. Like, MW2 was a, a terrible game. Last year's was crazy good. But that that is Halloween true, yeah. event was so good, dude. Like, all the POIs, there was the alien abduction one, the swamp monster, like, all ki all those, like, yeah. bosses. I don't know. That was really, it's really just, cool. Yeah. The map looked way different because it was big map at night. Yep. Uh, and, you know, like Verdansk at night. I remember that. That was insanely cool and fun, too. The first, I think the first time we had Zombie Royale. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, okay, it's, I don't know, Rebirth Island and Vondel Night. So I haven't played Vondel Night, but I imagine it looks like Vondel Night did last year, which was very cool looking. Yeah. Is Vondel Night even in yet? I don't know if it is. I think so maybe okay. i haven't played vondel yet because so for know. zombie royale it says vondel night weeks three and four because yeah i would rather oh, play okay. that but um Got it. i don't know like yeah zombie royale too it just these modes don't hit the same on resurgence in my opinion like it's it's a lot more interesting yeah. when you have the whole big map and all of it changes like we had last year i mean last year they seriously put so much time and effort into it and then this year is just like an afterthought. It's like, why even do it this year? Honestly, I don't know. But also, you are right. It like, especially with Zombie Royale in particular. So I was more talking about like the map variants and how they look and stuff. Um, when you talk specifically about Zombie Zombie Royale as a game mode, it was cool, really cool the first time, and uh -huh. then it kind of got like boring. And now, I don't even want to play it because being a zombie sucks and is boring as hell. It's bad. It's so yep. boring once you get over the gimmick, which I got over three years ago. So it's like, oh, cool. I can jump really high and I have to like run up to people and melee them when they have the most. Well, anyway, they, they kill me very easily. It's just not like fun. And then you have to go like race other zombies for the vials or whatever. It's I don't know it once you the novelty wears off. I just avoid the game mode because playing as a zombie is boring. That's yeah. And honestly, <laughs> playing against zombies is boring because either you easily kill them or they're just on top of you before you even know they're there or there are like a million of them. It's not fun anymore. Yeah. I, like I on was either just, side. I was way. just playing it and um, same thing. Like after, after I became a zombie for like the second or third time, I was like, all right, I'm bored and I just left the match. I'm like, I, yeah. I, I just, yeah. I yeah. Know. So Zombie Royale sucks for sure, but Purgatory is interesting. It's a new, crazy, weird mode, but overall, like with all of this, I was really wasn't expecting anything that great as of recently, and it's probably let down still from that. I thought it was yeah. going to be really good like months ago when we were talking about it and thinking about it, but they ended up just they doing hadn't nothing. Done anything to this yeah, game so that, for yeah. so long? Yeah, we there was even they must be spending their time on something. They weren't. I even saw a Ghost of Hope retweet something from a Sledgehammer dev, and the Sledgehammer dev like was talking about, yeah, like we got, you know, all we could get done for season six, and he was like, and, and we were also able to put out um, the the War Zone modes like Purgatory, Hell Spawn. So he's like, I guess just like Raven isn't even working on War Zone or they're just they're. Raven isn't doing anything on the current game at all because it's like it sounds like Sledgehammer made this whole mode and all of this, which kind of yeah. makes sense for this Purgatory mode because they have some crazy stuff they've done in um, multiplayer this year too with like the little uh, the little maps where you race through it. What are those called? Oh, get high and stuff. Yeah, they've done some interesting things, the and, and so it, 
Purgatory seems like something they would design. It's interesting. Purgatory is a, it's like, it also gets old kind of fast. It has some utility, which is, I think for me, it's saving grace, but it is like a very cool new idea. And I like when they do that, even if it's not really for me or it's not perfect right away. Like yeah. next year or next time they do a holiday LTM or something, I could see them doing even cooler stuff with a map that has like a safe zone and all the other like goofy stuff that this has now. So I like when they do that, even if they don't like, you know, nail it necessarily. But the, and then all of this is not to mention, which actually I think Tanner did mention. It's September 18th, 17th when this came out. Hey, man, we're six weeks out from Halloween. We're not even in October yet. And and people are not Halloween decorating. Even the like early birds are not doing that until October 1st. And we are weeks away from that. So it also doesn't hit that way because it's still like 90 degrees in my house. And I'm seeing zombies and Halloween stuff. Yeah. I'm not scared. I'm hot. Yeah. Don't do it so early. But they, of course, did that because the game launches BO6 before BO6. So I don't know. I guess they felt like they had to if they wanted to do it at all, which. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's fine. It just doesn't hit the same. You can't expect it to. It's not know. hitting the same. It's all. Yeah, yeah, it's all dead to me. For sure. They need to do something else besides yeah. Halloween. Have yeah, an Easter right, event, yeah. man. I don't care. And whoever in chat said something about like don't talk or don't wish for Christmas stuff, they'll bring Krampus back. I mean more like change the map, make it look interesting, make it look like snowy, change like some sounds, put freaking Christmas lights on buildings. It'd be way less effort than all the stuff they did for Purgatory. And like, just it just changes something up for a month. That could be like a, um, you know, they could they can launch something like that, the end of November, and keep that in till like the beginning of January or something. Like, just change the map. Don't even have it be an LTM. Just like change big map and put snow and stuff on it. So, anyways, though, you know, a lot of people like this stuff, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, they talk about purgatory mode, which we kind of already talked about. There are like portals, flying shipment, which uh, we talked about. There are power ups, the safe zone, um, other stuff. So whatever. It's a huge uh, whatever moving on from me. that, zombie royale again. It's only on rebirth. There's none of this is on the big map at all. So big map is the same and just as bad as it's been now. Oh, oh yeah, and speaking of big map, yeah, we did make the mistake of playing that game mode. So sweaty, bro. So sweaty. It's, it's just, just update insane. day, too. That, too. Yeah. But, but, yeah. I mean, that's not exactly their fault. So, anyways, moving on from that. So, there's some more Warzone. Warzone rewards. Uh, the four, like, reward tracks. I actually don't know if they're tracks or if there's just one. I think there is just one. So, instead of four reward tracks, there are just four. There are still four reward tracks. But there's only one reward or challenge, excuse me, in each row rather than four. So, mm. uh, I've done one of them already. Yet. I forgot about them. I thought it was gonna like once you unlock it, it shows the next one. But I unlocked one of them, and there was no, that's it. So I was like, okay. So anyway, whatever. The camos look cool in pictures. I don't know if they're animated or not though. And if they're not animated, I'm out. Which they haven't been. I yet. don't think they are. So, yeah. and they don't say that they're animated here which makes me think they are not. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, whatever. So there's some more ground loot now. Uh, this sucks in pubs cause there's a lot of riveters, which is a full auto shotgun. Yeah. Ground loot seems like th they said they made a minor adjustments. Definitely minor. Most of the guns are exactly the same that I encountered. There are a few new ones for sure, but like all the old trash ones are still in there. Yeah. So yeah, there's it's still not some trash that ones. noticeable. They didn't change like buy stations on big map or anything. Yeah. I mean, they added the new guns and then they added the riveter. That's like what I've noticed basically. Yeah. So whatever. Uh, anyways, moving on from that. Uh, Intel contracts will no longer award a bunker key. Okay. And then fortunes keep on that reading. So now we'll talk about the new weapons. So 
two new weapons. Uh, the first of which is the cast off LSW LMG. So we did talk about this in the roadmap. It described it as having best in class fire rate and tax stance accuracy. So, uh, yeah, they were not really wrong about this actually. So it has a default mag of a hundred rounds. And also, I don't know if there's a new attachment, there's a new under barrel and you can put it on this gun. I don't know if you can put it on every LMG or if it's literally just this gun. You can put but it on some others, yeah. Okay. It can it makes you be able to move really fast and shoot at the same time in tax stance and it's really fun. Uh it's really fun. Cuz you have a 100 round box mag on a light machine gun. And it also has no stock, this grip, uh, you know, and then all the tax dance attachments. So laser, uh, what else would it be? Short barrel, and you get more movement speed that way. And then our tax dance rear grip. And you just run around fast and full auto people, and it's really fun. Uh, at least in multiplayer it was. I got like a 6 or 7x once I got it max level because I wanted to use it giga tax dance. It was really fun. Um but it uses AR ammo. So in terms of like war zone, do I see this being good? No, nah, probably not. Not against good players, honestly. You have to be like really, really close to land all your bullets still. I'm kind of, yeah, anyway. Tax it's like a, a conversation it, for another time. It's like a super sweat rebirth gun. Like if you use that and then you use an SMG with it or something. If you're some guy yeah, that drops like that 40, could be fun. you drop like 40 or 50 kills a game, you can get away with something like that. But every single one of you listening, it's, yeah, it's not going to work for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is a good idea though on rebirth. Just like, don't plan on taking long range fights, push everything. Yeah. And then be have this fun. in like a sub. Mm -hmm. That could be fun. Yeah. It's really fun. It could be good in Warzone. I obviously, uh, like I just said, I haven't tried it, but in multiplayer it's really fun. Um, but it's, but Ultimately, it's kind of like a meme. Um, it might be good, but it's not like busted OP. Otherwise, I would have seen it a bajillion times. Um, so the strafe speed you know. is crazy, busted OP, but the actual yeah, gun seems like it doesn't kill that fast. So, yeah. So, uh, and then the other new gun, which I was not expecting anything out of the DTIR 30 6 battle rifle. Uh, so, this thing was insane. It was like a five or six shot kill on someone fully plated at like any range. Uh, so if you were upset when the STG came out and you were dying in seven bullets and it felt like the time to kill was too fast and you were begging for it to be nerfed, that was me, by the way. Get a load of this guy because it's much worse than that. It's yeah. just a better S pre nerf STG, like a far better one. You get actually one frame that feels like you don't literally, but it it's really disgusting and bad and not good. Luckily, they just nerfed it like 20 minutes ago. Um, they did a lot of nerfs to it. Uh, it was like lowered the max damage, near mid damage, and then like minimum damage also. And they lowered the headshot multiplier. So I don't know if it's still going to be the best gun. It for sure was. Um, before that nerf, it still might be one of the best guns after that nerf. Frankly, I don't know. I, I would have to like, look at charts. It just happened 20 minutes ago. I think it, it, it will be that, at range for sure. At long range, it'll be the meta because okay. it's easy to yeah, use. Exactly. Exactly. Cause what I was going to say is, um, even if they bring in the damage, another reason it was really OP is because yeah, it has like no recoil. Like it's so easy to use. So even if they lowered the damage with this nerf, which they did, it could still absolutely be one of the meta guns, if not the meta gun, because it's so easy to just land shots with it. And it feels like it has a ton of bullet velocity. I don't know if it actually does, but it feels nasty. I think it does. So. I think TGD said it also has better velocity than the STG. Oh, OK. But yeah. Max yeah. damage it feels that way. Uh, uh, down three near mid damage down seven mid damage down five minimum damage 
Wait, oh, that, that was mid damage down five, minimum damage down one, and then headshot multiplier down from 1.5 to 1.35. So they just nerfed that. And then also in the patch notes, um, they had said they nerfed that jack conversion kit for the Rawl, that like single fire conversion kit, and they Protean, didn't. Yeah. Yeah, and they didn't. And then TGD tweeted about it and talked about how they actually didn't make any of the changes. They've now actually made those changes. So that is now nerfed. Yeah. So that's very good. Um, yes. So anyway, other than that, uh, there are new attachments. So yeah, there are two new muzzle attachments. One of them's a suppressor with an integrated laser for tactical low profile action. I wonder if that increases your tax stance. May, I don't think so. I don't know. I would look into it. I looked through muzzles, but I, maybe I hadn't unlocked this one yet. Uh, and then a compensator, which just gives you better muzzle control. It's probably like a Jack BFB, but not quite as good, would be my guess. And then the underbarrel I was talking about where you can sprint and fire at the same time is called the Brace Fire HC Grip. And I believe you unlock that by leveling the new LMG. Yeah. So I would unlock it. It's fun. Um, and these things are carrying forward. So maybe that would come to BO6, maybe? I actually don't know. But if it does, you'd want the option. I really don't know yet, because be really last insane. thing we had said, um, some people were kind of leaking that a lot of attachments were going to be removed, essentially, and True. then a lot of them were going to be changed. So not really sure what's going yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this one's new, that's why I'm, like, unsure. But yeah. Anyway, whatever. Uh, and then some new aftermarket parts. We already talked about the rocket, so whatever. And then some weapon balance changes. <clears throat> so nothing really that crazy. Uh, before I learned how OP the battle rifle was, the main things I had my eye on were the Holger 556, which got its max damage range increased to 51 meters without attachments. So that's insane, by the way. You're doing the same amount of damage if they're one meter or 51 meters away from your character <laughs> yeah. before you put any attachments on it. I saw that and I was like, that's really insane sounding to me because with attachments, that's probably what 65 ish. That's like most of your yeah, gun around 60. We are getting just one flat TTK everywhere. So if the DTIR isn't good anymore, that was one thing I was keeping my eye on. And then another thing was the MTZ 556, which got its headshot multi increased to 1.3 up from 1.25, which probably changes shots to kill if you sprinkle in a headshot. So I would say like those were the so two fun. I had my eye on. Yeah. And it's also just fun to use. Yeah. So, uh, but with that said, there were some other changes. I'm not going to read all of them, but those are the ones like that really stuck out to me. Uh, BP 50 was buffed a little bit. MCW's range buffed STG. They said they nerfed, but they didn't actually nerf it yet. That's what I've seen. So they nerfed the um, the damage the range myself. was decreased from 36 to 27, and near near mid damage range decreased to 36, down from 44. That I believe happened. It was the modifiers did not. So lower torso modifier uh, decreased to 1.15, down from 1.3, and then the arm and hand modifiers decreased and those supposedly did not actually change. I see. Okay. So yeah, cause people, cause I cope this morning was like, STG still feels really good. And that was before any of us knew, I guess that it didn't actually really get nerfed very much. Um, once that nerf does go through though, I think it's going to be probably not the best option. Um, Lower damage ranges, and then, I mean, 15% less tummy damage. And also 15% less arm damage. That's a big deal. That's, like, a lot. Uh, that's a big nerf. Which, honestly, I'm fine with, because I, I like the STG. It's fun to use. I think it was in a pretty good spot, but I'm also getting bored of it. I'm ready to use another gun, so I'll take that. Uh, a couple other standouts here are... Some of these SMGs, AMR got its uh, range increased and its tummy modifier increased by 10%. Probably not a meta gun still. It's a little too slow, frankly, but 
It's a pretty big buff. Uh, HRM got its max damage range increased and its tummy modifier increased by 5%. And then the Ram 9 got its damage ranges increased as well. Uh, if anything, I don't think any of these are, st are meta still because there were no nerfs. That's it. That's all that changed for SMGs. So I still think Striker is probably a better option. I still think the Static's probably a better option. I still think even the Super is if you wanted like movement. So these are nice, but I don't think quite enough for any of these, frankly. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, they nerfed the Rawl conversion kit a lot, which is good. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Ranked season is still ranked Warzone on Rebirth Island. But it's only like 30 days long this season. Yeah, so. ends on October and apparently, 17th. Yeah. And, and apparently, according to Diaz Biffle and Spam Gola and FIFA Kill, at least, uh, the lobbies are sweatier than they've ever been in ranked. So, have fun. Have fun playing that. Yeah. Because Biffle got like seventh place. And by the way, he's the best, literally provably, definitively, the best player on Earth. And he was not winning every lobby at all. He was getting stomped. So Why are luck. they ending this early? Hey, good luck. Why do we think good they're luck. doing this? What's going on when all this stuff uh, ends? The Is there some big time. Warzone update coming out? Like, So what's going to happen at midseason? I don't really understand what they're going to do. Is there anything specific? Ask about no, it. Google, I'd like you to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I, I, just, I just don't get what they're doing. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but sorry. Um, we sure could, yeah. Yeah, cool phone. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they're ending it early either. Um, I guess they're probably going to have a Warzone LTM that it like makes you play. Do you remember they've done that before? When it was like yeah. the end of the whatever game, it would make you play that LTM for like the six hours. But it's it was not the end of this. This the, the Warzone update won't happen until like December. So no, what are I they know. doing? Yeah. It might be like an LTM that's like a lore lead in to BO6 that they want to make you do. I don't know. I don't know, bro. It's a good question, but whatever. I ultimately don't really care that much, frankly. But um, it is just something. Well, I'm just know. kind of talking about everything, too, because like all like the zombie royale and stuff, all that ends around the same day. So I'm just like, what is happening? OK, yeah. So they're probably doing some in-game shenanigans, yeah. like some event they, they want to force everyone to do. So who knows? We'll find out. Anyway, other than that, they banned a couple people, but certainly not everyone. Still rage hackers, uh, according to, again, some of the ranked streamers I watch, uh, but I did get like three ban confirmation things today. So I guess that's cool. Or yeah, yesterday. it seems like it's usually pretty good for a while right after updates. But yeah, when I was watching Biffle last night for 30, 45 minutes, they were talking about how they had seen at least two cheaters that night in ranked play. Yeah. So game, this shit is ass 100 emoji and that's it. So that's season six. Uh, so we got a kind of a memer gun and then a really insanely broken overpowered gun that luckily they immediately addressed. I'm glad I'd rather the new gun, the DTIR be dog shit than as insane as it was before that nerf for sure. Like I'd rather it just be completely irrelevant. Hopefully it's neither. Hopefully it's like viable, but not insane. Um, but besides that, that's pretty much it. And at least last year when we got our Halloween LTM, even though that was all of the content we got for the entire year of Modern Warfare 2, smile, it was at least a very good LTM that they they sacrificed the entire other month's life cycles for. In this case, we did get a better game this year for sure. Um, much better game. And I'm still overall much happier with MW3 than MW2, obviously. But, uh, you know, season four and beyond, pretty sparse on stuff. Yeah, pretty bad. Especially if you're a big map enjoyer, it was pretty sparse on stuff that's fun and new. Um, So, okay. Got it. Yeah. 35 days, ladies and gentlemen. 
that is the that is the column you should receive. We are waiting for BO6, and we will never be more waiting than we are now because nothing like new or interesting is going to happen until yeah they shut down the ranked play season and then they do their LTM where we all get on a train and Strella it together or something. So yeah, cool. Hope you like the game right now. Yeah. So anyway, that's season six. Yeah. And I've it's got a, uh, it's a that for sure. Yeah. Didn't expect much. It's late in the game's life cycle. But. I didn't, yeah, exactly. To be fair, I didn't expect much either. Yeah. It I'm is not late like in the shocked. Game's life cycle. I can wait. I'm, I'd be shocked if it was like interesting, frankly, I, yeah. I did expect the Halloween event to be a little better. Yeah. Purgatory is cool, but yeah. How long will that last? How, how long will I want to play purgatory for a month straight? No. Again, yeah. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, oh man, what was I going to say? But at least to be fair, the game is not worse after season six than it was before. It almost was, but they nerfed the gun like right away. Yeah. So, you know what? Fine. Cause we have had seasons before where the game just becomes strictly worse after it launches. Yeah. So at least that didn't happen to send off the, uh, M dub three, which was overall a great year. And I'm excited to do a little wrap up pod at some point soon about it. Um, and I think now we can, we're not getting anything new anymore, but anyway, that's it for patch notes. Change in effect. We have a couple little news items, not much going on here either, but, um, we will, uh, cover what, what we have nonetheless, uh, some world series wars on stuff and a little pro tip for you on BO6. We'll start with that. This is from Charles intelligence. He tweeted this, uh, six days ago, unused MW two and MW three XP tokens will transfer only over to Warzone after the BO6 integration happens later this year. The XP tokens do not carry forward into BO6 multiplayer or zombies per Activision. That is a yikes. <sighs> that is a huge yikes That is crazy and, and a yikes. Yeah, why are they yeah. deciding to do that now? It's it's worked the opposite. It means for it to transfer to Warzone. So once the integration happens, I'll have 500 double XP tokens that I can pop in Warzone, but not in multiplayer of BO6. I doesn't that sound so. off? Well, that's what doesn't make sense. So it's like, what if somebody got all their tokens in multiplayer and they don't play Warzone at all? They just can't use those tokens next year in BO6? I know. That's what it like it's this. Weird. This almost seems wrong to me, like some idiot spokesperson or something just gave wrong information. I don't know. Because this has not been the way this has worked for the last, what, four years now? Seems odd to change it. Seems kind of scummy to change it, too, honestly. Yeah. Um, it's like they don't want people just... It's like they want to slow people down of leveling up And I could see them wanting to do that, for sure, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I. It wouldn't surprise me, but... This is shit. This shit is ass 100. Um, what I'm guessing is your XP tokens will not carry forward on the launch of BO6, but when the BO6 and Warzone integration happens and then you're on the unified client again and you won't have to cross launch or whatever, then the tokens will carry forward into Warzone and BO6 multiplayer. That's what I'm guessing and hoping is the case. Because it, again, seems very weird for me to unlock, for example, a double weapon XP token in BO6 multiplayer and then not be able to use that in Warzone, but also have a separate set of double weapon XP tokens that I can use only in Warzone and not in BO6. That seems weird once they're integrated. So... I still think it's worth it to save the tokens, frankly. Um, oh yeah, it's not for like sure. I mean, there's nothing to use to them this on this season. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, see, I, way, I'm taking it whatever. as, and if you want to use tokens in multiplayer or zombies, Bo6, you'll have to literally get it through the battle pass in Bo6 bundles. It sounds to me like it's not coming at all. Like those are not coming forward to the new multiplayer game whatsoever. Yeah, it might not. 
Yeah, but. maybe not. Panda said, uh, back in Cold War, you're the pop an XP token in Warzone and change the game to Cold War and the XP would be ac active. Yeah. You're right. I remember that happening. You're right. Maybe that'll so work again were, this year. Like, Warzone exclusive tokens. So yeah, they're probably going back to that. That was the Treyarch game too. Huh. I do remember that. Yeah, I don't remember L. that. So, so is that the way it worked back then, then, I guess? They didn't carry forward? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Don't yep. like it, but yeah. I feel like they need to say then, like, when you're getting tokens, this is an MW3 slash Warzone token. Like, they need to yeah, say like that going it. forward. Yeah, make them different. Especially because they jerk themselves off about the uh, integrated, like, cross-progression across all consoles and all video games. Yeah, and, and then they're carry-forward bullshit. DMR in Warzone Mobile, but the XP tokens don't transfer? Even though my emblem does, that's odd, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I hate it, but I don't really care that much. It's not that big of a deal, but it's, it is kind of annoying. So moving on from that, we have some, we have some statistics that I've gathered. Yeah, you gathered and all not these whatever stats. this Photoshop says about World Series of Warzone statistics. So yeah. what did I tweet? on a day yeah on so Twitter. i mean this is the first pod actually since the tournament we already told you it was going to happen but biffle's team did win world series of warzone i know super shocking fire you still owe me 200 dollars. by the you. way he's dodging and you, i've dude. been dodged i've got it bro's yeah. been real quiet since he lost real a bit. quiet got so it. uh yeah just want to go through a few things with world series of warzone hey. so first of all raz put together a list um of all the kds from every single player from uh day one and day two Biffle, day one of the World Series of Warzone LAN tournament, had a 9.5 KD. I've received that. That's Second place insane. was Hisoka, who was also on Biffle's team, with a 4.88 KD. Yep. So Then after that, uh, Enkyo, 4.7, Aiden, 3.2, and then it goes down from there. So Biffle, 9.5. Tenth place, tenth highest KD was Scummin with a 2.08, which is still insane for a public lobby LAN, or private match LAN tournament like this. A 2KD on LAN is wild. So Biffle had a 9.5 day one. Yeah. Uh, and good. then bottom of the list, there was some guy day one that had a 0 0.08 KD. I That's guess people were torching hilarious. this guy. Uh, supposedly he had a bunch of audio issues and like literally half of his matches, his IEMs just weren't working and he did not have game audio so uh if that's the case okay. okay but yeah there are some people that are like 0.2 kds in here quite a few of them so that was day one um day two raz also put together a list biffle day two 4.63 kd eight in second place with 4.2 so biffle 2. at first 6. place eight in was second place with a 2.6 kd 2.6 yeah so on both days biffle had the number one kd and the closest person was almost half of that yeah. KD. Mm -hmm. That's insane. That's an insane stat. Yeah. That is it's, such an insane yeah. stat, dude. And he doubled everyone's KD. Yeah. Both days. Jesus. And day one and two, Biffle, Hisoka, and Shifty, the winning team, they were all, they were, uh, all three of them were in the top 10 uh, for KD. For both KD. Days. Yeah. So, yeah, they torched. And then day two, uh, thought this would be kind of interesting to talk about. So, Dead last day two, it was some guy named Reload with a KD of 0 0.2. We'll come back to him. Two places above that was the only female in the tournament, Omit T, TJ or something, I think is her name, with a 0.27 okay. KD. Don't really know anything about her, but a lot of people thought she kind of cheated, but it's probably just because she's a girl. But I don't know. She did terrible on land. Realistically, it's probably just she really is not up to their level at all. Um, but this Reload guy. Which is not a dig by the way yeah no I'm she's not just yeah. <laughs> yeah no i would get farmed of course yeah, yeah. but so a lot of people called I'd have a three her a cheater but who Why knows no. so reload 0 0.2 kd at lan so this guy was top 10 in ranked play last year in almazra i guess people always thought he was sus he was insane in ranked play going up against all these other players then he comes to land and has a 0 0.2 kd and drops four kills on land he dropped four kills both days on land uh so even like ebates tweeted at him and he was like 13 uh, games four kills. he's like you suck reload enjoy the long flight home and think about how dumb you look <laughs> based um based. 
reload nificent. So people think this guy cheats. So let's. I, I have a little clip here that I'm going to show. This is a clip I'm that glad somebody tweeted I out. I think I probably saw. Is this the one where he's shooting in the water? You might have seen this clip because I liked it, and then it probably showed up on your feed, even though likes don't show up anymore. And that's how you saw because yeah, I saw you retweeted this after. Yep, exactly. Yeah. That's so what happened, here yeah. is this guy in Warzone oh, Two last this. year. This is his aim. We'll watch this little 10 second clip here. Uh, keep in mind, this guy got four kills on land with a 0 0.2 KD. Let's watch this clip real quick. This is top 250 calling card. Look at the same. Boy, hey. Hey. That looked like aim lock to me. Hey. That's not a bugged out kill cam because nothing else is bugging out. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly, so I don't know. Everyone says this guy cheats. Everyone who's in the league even thinks this guy cheats, I guess. So, well, so here's something to keep in mind. Okay. So, Reload was literally the worst player at all of World Series of Warzone on day two, anyway. Uh, so, and on day one, he didn't do great either. But how many of these guys? Because not all of them do, but how many of these guys play a lot of, like, ranked Resurgence and grind for top 250? At least half of them. Well, Resurgence, hardly any of them, to be fair. But but this is, he was top 10 last year on big map ranked play. That's what I'm talking oh. about. This is, this is oh, last year. Mistake. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Resurgence rank doesn't matter. I don't, yeah, that doesn't matter. Half these people, most of these guys don't play it at all. Or they don't take it seriously. Yeah, I guess they don't. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe actually, like season one season they did. Now. Maybe by the second season they were all dwindling. Yeah. But no, they don't. They don't care about resurgence ranked really. Yeah. E either way, though, like so like FIFA kill does FIFA kill, for example, was at LAN and he also plays a ton of ranked resurgence. And I was going to say. It would be weird for Reload to do much better than him on that ladder, which is the same ladder FIFA Kill plays on. I play against FIFA Kill. I played against him like six times in ranked. So like they're all we're all in the same lobbies. Um, it would be weird for him to be top ten for any season. Yeah. And then FIFA Kill to not be top ten, even though FIFA Kill did way better on land than him. That would be odd. Uh, evidently, that's not exactly what happened uh because i guess he was top 250 on big map last year but then i would say it's even more absurd to think that he's legit yeah yeah There's well especially no last year when all those guys were taking it serious and they were grinding exactly, for that big map if this yeah. random guy was top 10 and ranked play on that surely he's a demon right well obviously he's probably cheating so there are some other people supposedly um I didn't catch many of the names, but I saw a lot of tweets about, yeah, hey, funny how a lot of these guys show up to land and do absolutely nothing. They can't even get a kill, basically. So reload yeah, top of that list. My my Twitter feed was full of people calling him out and be like, wow, hey, it's like he was I hacking the whole it. time. Yeah. And by the way, this is what Tanner and I have been saying for the longest, as the Zoomers would say, is exactly what happened here. It's like, dude. You're going to just cheat online. You're going to cheat your way through qualifiers. You're going to cheat your way through ladder. You're going to try and build a name for yourself on Twitch or whatever by cheating. And then you're going to try to like qualify to World Series of Warzone and get to land. That's not a great plan because what if your wish comes true? Then what? And exactly what we have described would happen, obviously, of course, happened. You got exposed. You can't cheat at LAN. I mean, technically you can, but good luck trying that. So he wasn't cheating at LAN, obviously. And now, if he if he built like a streaming career for himself, I've never heard of the guy. He but probably doesn't. He, He's probably a nobody. Probably a nobody. Uh, there are some people that are really good that like, you know, have streaming careers. Like Spam Gola, for example. He plays with FIFA Kill on Ranked all the time. And he streams. So I've... I was watching his stream this morning. He has like 200 viewers on average or something. That's a good, that's a good little streaming career. Not little, sorry. That's a good, you know, that's a good streaming career. But so if reload had done that or was trying to do that, whatever, and then using world series of Warzone as a vector for that, 
you are stupid because <laughs> what if you ha what if you get there? This happens. You do you get shit on because you're not good, and then everyone clowns you. And if he did have a streaming career, it is now over. It is now done. No one's gonna watch the guy. No one's gonna like him. A actually, th there's unironically a, unfortunately, a sub element, a seedy underbelly of Twitch.tv, where all the cheaters like to watch other cheaters stream. So. Maybe he would have that community, but it would be a lot smaller than whatever he was trying to gain for sure. Yeah. It's just so dumb and it's the most obvious child thought process where you cannot think like three steps ahead on anything in your life. Yeah. And it's very satisfying to watch them get exposed. Plus he's it's British. Extremely satisfying. And if he's British, I'm so glad that's true. And I'm glad that I you think told so. Me Maybe even fatter W. Yeah. Yeah. That is a Great. long flight, by the way. Bro flew, bro sat on a jet in economy class in the middle seat, hopefully. For how long is that? 16 hours just to get spit on and laughed yeah. at online. And then he has to go all the way back with zero earnings and zero bitches. And now zero viewers, if he had any. So W... But also, why are you so dumb? Just cheat and don't try to qualify. Just cheat for online and don't go to land. Exactly. Yeah. yeah try to simple. try to pick up your scraps online. I mean, I don't. He probably doesn't have a streaming career. He has like 300 followers on Twitter. And these are the guys uh -oh. that we always talk about. They don't really have anything to lose. But then when you go to land, you might have a little to lose. So maybe he lost it. Yeah, because he might just be blacklisted now. People might never let this guy play in tournaments again. So. I would hope so, but Activision's completely fucking dumb, so maybe not. Who yeah, knows? I wonder how they did. Question. I wonder how they did at the um, online tournament to get in. Let me see how they placed. Uh, I've got a list up here. They placed tenth. The top twenty teams made it, and they placed tenth. Yeah. So okay, that's cool. Yeah. But anyway, it's shout out funny. to that guy. He was shout probably cheating. Guy. Almost um certainly. yeah next up thing or next up uh real quick more, huh. actually while we're on the topic of world series of Warzone, we did do our our last episode was a little watch party of half of day one um there were some other issues that were funny so for example biffle had just a worse graphics card than literally everyone else i've got it uh there were other technical issues as well but none of them mattered because no one was going to win except Biffle anyway. However, nerfing Biffle, that does matter. Obviously, I'm joking. Everyone should have had the same equipment. There shouldn't have been any technical issues. But it's especially crazy that Biffle had just a worse GPU. It was like, it was an AMD one, so I don't really know what it was. But it was substantially worse than everyone else's computer had. Like, everyone's computer was all running the exact same stuff on LAN, except his which had a like generation or two older GPU, I think. So basically he was just getting fewer for like 60, 40 to 60 fewer FPS than everyone else for a while. And then they figured it out and then they just let him play on it some more. And then eventually they switched it out completely insane and funny. Didn't matter. Obviously he still shit on everyone, but that's absurd. Um, of course, and then uh, besides that, as far as issues go, yeah, they had to restart the lobby a bunch. It was a classic Activision event where, especially on day one, time between matches was like an hour almost. It was insane. It was really bad. Not well put together. And on LAN, they were using lobby codes just like we do for our online private match hangouts, but they were doing it on LAN. So they had to give everyone a lobby code and all of these 16 year old streamers would have to be told, Hey guys, by the way, don't share the lobby code or show it on your live stream. And they're all live streaming or else it's going to get bombarded by randoms watching. And then we're gonna have to make a new lobby and form a new lobby code. Day one shit. Activision fix it. Do something else. It's literally land. Just figure it out. Multi-billion dollar company. That was also fun and exciting. It wasn't. Um, but then other than that, just talking a little more about World Series of Warzone, 
now that it's over. Uh, yeah, Biffle's team won easily, which we called. Uh, it was not close at all. It got a little sketchy, sort of. I don't even want to say sketchy, but it got a little... It almost got hairy. It didn't, but it almost did because they did not win their first, like, three games. Yeah, I think they and didn't then, win until their fourth, right? Yeah, I believe that was the case. And then they won game four, and then they won game five and were on match point, and they were the only team on match point. And then the first moment anyone was on match point, it was Biffle's team and only Biffle's team, and they won. No one else even got to match point. So overall, it wasn't close at all. I mean, literally, they won as quickly as they possibly could, and no one else could have won that game. So the match point system that was designed to make it fun and exciting, it just didn't work, unfortunately. And I almost wanted them to get second that game so I could watch like a close match where, I don't know, Scummin and Biffle are both on match point. That would have been really exciting. Or if like a European team had gotten match point, if Biffle and them decided to go AFK for 10 matches to let the Europeans catch up, that could have been even more fun and exciting because then they would have won and given EU players a hope and then crushed it. That would have been even better. But yeah. none of that happened. It wasn't exciting at yeah. all. To be fair to Activision, not their fault. Nothing actually that anyone could have done about it, unfortunately, unless you make the the win condition even more RNG than the match point one is, which I don't think you should do. Yeah, it's no one's fault, but it was just a complete raffle stomp blowout and shifty his ass. <laughs> one hundred emoji. Yeah, <laughs> by far the worst player on that team from my point of view. And I watched every single match of the World Series of Warzone. But like Hisoka and Biffle were doing things, and then Shifty was just he was so, not with them and throwing and dying. Day He's one, ass. he was literally actually throwing, which he even said he like said something I'm about joking, like all right, way, like we got ass, our but. our our groove now. But he really did throw like the first two or three matches. We we said that on that saturday pods you're like what is he doing like he's actually throwing why is he going there why is he landing like what is this guy doing right now why is he making he these stupid like plays spread from his the boys yeah it was weird it was weird yeah so obviously he didn't throw they won decisively and maybe that's part of their like strat is like shifty's the guy that's supposed to kind of split off a little bit so that they can get multiple angles, multiple peaks, and then he's just gonna die more and they're okay with that because they still all get, no matter how well you, whether your KD is a nine on day one or a 2.5, like Biffles and Shifties respectively, once you win, they each get $100,000. <laughs> so yeah. probably doesn't really matter that much. Uh, and maybe there was like some strategy to that, but from my POV, Shifty seemed to be doing significantly worse than the other two. Um, I don't know who people tout as the top three individual players at Warzone. I know Biffle's obviously like unanimous. Biffle and Shifty are usually the, the top two. Shifty, really? A lot of well, there are people that think Shifty is better than Biffle even after. Actually, they're they're always a top two. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that w and then who would be three? I don't really know past that, but usually Biffle and Shifty are one and two. Interesting. Well, if that's true, then that also does explain the, um, like people talk about like IGL in-game leader, you know, like, oh, he, like, he's the team captain or whatever. And I, sometimes I think that's like a real thing and it's important and it's relevant. And then sometimes I think like, bro, it's Warzone. You don't need like, you don't need like an IGL. This isn't like the Super Bowl. I I, I don't know. It's it's kind of just about getting kills and doing being smart, rotating, whatever. But after watching that team, Hisoka really did add a lot of intangibles to me. It felt like. No, like you it, do it, need it, somebody like, IGL like that. IGL is actually a real thing. And oh, I feel yeah. like he proved it because I watched mostly, almost exclusively their POV. And he really was kind of like he was wielding a new weapon that released with season seven called Biffle. And he, all he had to do to shoot it was Comet basically Yeah. like, Hey, Biffle and Shifty, there's guys over there, figure it out. And then they would, because he has good comms 
and because obviously he's good too. He just directs them to the guy that he calmed or whatever, and then zapped, zapped. Yeah, bros playing Age so. of Empires with his teammates, just telling them Actually, to attack. Yeah, dude, defend guys. here, attack like, here. Yeah, giving orders and like an RTS. Only, only cool attack watch, if they though. shoot. Yeah, no, he. Yeah, I mean that's how it is. Because think about it: when everybody is that good, every single one of those guys has insane game sense, and they're gonna be making calls. So you kind of have to have just one guy do everything and the other two just listen. Because in other words, you're, you're going to be like, no, like we should do this instead. We should do, like D. He, sorry, D as Biffle to you guys. I call him D because okay. we're buddies. God, that pissed me off. That's what they call him, man. They call him D. <laughs> yeah, but you said it so effortlessly like he's your, <laughs> like he's your roommate. Bro, it's okay. my little bud, dude. So <laughs> oh, I wish I was his friend. So he... <laughs> I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Um, basically, he doesn't... He just kills people, you know? He just needs to run around and shoot people, and Hisoka does all the talking and just tells everybody what to do, and it works out that way. He tells them where to rotate. He tells them what to do, when to wait, when to throw a PDS, all of that. So, yeah, teams definitely right. need that. Yeah, and they do need to decide on one guy who's going to be the guy. Like... Because you're right, they all have insane game sense. Obviously, they're all insane. So they all have insane game sense. They probably all could call the plays and like have whatever, smart rotates, whatever. But you can't be arguing in the World Series of Warzone or deciding ever. There's not enough time. Those kids are way too insane. That's stuff's happening way too fast. So you need one guy who's a dictator. And he says, hey, we're rotating here now. And you just do it. <laughs> like there's no thought... There's no argument, you, whatever. And he did really well at that, and it was cool to see. I like, I enjoyed that a yeah. lot. Um, and and also, I'm very glad they won because Hisoka and Shifty are extremely toxic, and they did it on land too. Like I think they were sitting next to Aiden's team, and one, one game Aiden won on day one, and he stands up and he looks over at them. He's, he's like. <laughs> He's, he's horrible. They're fucking horrible. Or no, it wasn't his yeah. team, but the, he did shout that. It was, it was so funny. And he was like standing up, looking around at the other people on land. Yeah, they're he's funny. He's built like a normal person and not like a, a, me, like some nerd. So like no one's going to do anything, obviously. But it was really funny. He was shooting bodies in a $1 million tournament regularly, by the way. He shot numerous bodies. In, in the video game, it's hilarious, uh, which is just insane to, like, think to do or find time to do. But he did. Uh, and, yeah, Shifty was also doing a lot of trash talk, gets spit on, shooting bodies himself as well. Uh, Shifty did say a, a word, I think. I'm pretty sure that was funny, but I'm not going to mention that. Uh, but it was a toxic word, bad word. Um and I think his mic was muted, but Biffles wasn't, and it picked it up, and it was funny. Hmm. But anyways, uh, it was a fun tournament to watch. It, I just wish it had been more competitive. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't really. I didn't watch day two at all because I, I figured they were gonna win. If something had started yeah, happening and there were like four or five teams on match point, I would have watched it. But mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, moving yeah. on from that, I'm over it. Um. Xbox did more layoffs, Activision. So the guy at COD Next, one of the main casters, his name is... <laughs> okay. His name is Miles Ross. He's kind of a fan favorite. Uh, worked, did things for CDL, I think. COD Next and all that. All these events. He's been casting for him for a while. Was laid off. So that's cool. Um, shout out to layoffs, I guess. Just, I mean, constantly. Microsoft yeah. will save them though, right? All the Activision employees wanted this so badly. Hey, they've laid off more people than in the last year than uh, what's his name did Bobby. Yeah, they have. So I did hear somewhere recently surrounding this discourse. I don't know if it's true or not, but it might be. It seems like it is that tech in general, not just like Microsoft and them, are doing a ton of layoffs recently. But that's only because they they did a ton of over hiring. Like uh, two, yeah, two or three years ago, which I yep. can see being true. But I mean, yeah. Um, who got laid off? You said Microsoft. Oh no, Activision layoffs. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I don't know what Miles did. Was he just like a commentator guy? Yeah, he was like the main guy at COD Next yapping. Okay, okay. Well, that sucks then. I think he, he looks vaguely familiar, so he was cool. But if they laid off more like QA people, I'm all in favor of that. I support that. Yeah. Uh, they don't do QA anyway, so get, just evacuate the department and hire new people or contract it. Uh, so if you were a QA tester at Activision and you got laid off, I'm happy. I'm glad you did because you suck at your job and your whole department sucks. Yeah. Badly, badly. So W hope you're homeless. Let's see if there are more. I hope there are more specifically in the QA department or the audio department. Um, yeah, those would be my go-tos. So, yeah. Um, so last thing here, there's a new Battlefield game coming out. I was trying to find the info. I thought this article had it, but it doesn't. Um, basically, the TLDR is Battlefield knows they put out a couple terrible games, and they claim they're going back to their classics, back to their roots. 64-player servers again instead of 124 or 128. Uh, Class-based system versus the specialist they have now. The game should release next year. And there was some Battle Royale info. Where is that now? I don't know where it was either, but like I saw a bunch of people. Yeah, talking now about I can't it on find Twitter. it. I saw a tweet and I figured yeah. it'd be everywhere, and now I can't find that tweet. But basically, um, it sounds like their battle royale game they were talking about sounded like it could actually compete with Warzone. So this is something to keep an eye on. Again, it'll be like over a year till we get more info out of this, basically. But they said it was kind of be like a ground loot system. And if you pay, played the newer Battlefields, you know that you can like attach, you can have attachments set. So you can have, say, like two or three optics set. And then in game, mid match, you can hold down a button and then literally just swap your optic out out of like the two or three choices that you have. So. Their idea was they have all base ground loot weapons that you can pick up, and then instead of having a loadout system like Call of Duty, and oh. instead of having a ground loot attachment system, you would have your preset attachments that you can then change whenever you want throughout that match on your gun. So you can throw in a long range scope, a close range scope, and you can change those on the fly. So it actually it's sounded interesting. And I think it was like 120, 120 player lobbies they were going for or something. It sounded like they're setting up to absolutely compete with Warzone. So that could be interesting because none of the other Battlefield news out of the last three, four years, it hasn't been good. It hasn't been interesting. So this is something to keep your eye on, though, for sure. Yeah, they tried a BR with, I believe it was called Firestorm, but that was like years ago. And we've been saying, or at least I have, uh, what are you guys doing? Make another BR. Like, that's where the FPS wave is going right now. And Battlefield already has the groundwork for a BR, like a lot of it. I mean, it's like the easiest game to turn into a battle royale. Yeah, it's but got they the just have shit already. devs, it's really had bad that devs. Warzone. It has everything. It's had vehicles the vehicles, yeah. Warzone. Yeah, exactly. Helicopter. It's got everything. Yeah. It could literally, so. if they just had a studio that know what they were doing, they have the groundwork to make a way better battle royale than Warzone is. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. They just so need to simply cool. do it. Yeah, it would be. Battlefield yeah, be games cool are as fun. A video game enjoyer, yeah, exactly. As a consumer, but also even if you're like a Warzone purist or whatever, you should still be happy about that because capitalism. There, it would be some competition. Now, that's not to say, let's say Battlefield makes the perfect BR and it's really popular, it wouldn't kill Warzone. No matter how good it is, no matter how popular it is, it wouldn't kill Warzone. But if it's good enough, which is possible, I mean, it's dice, so probably not, but it's possible. If it was good enough, it could take a pretty significant chunk of the casuals that play Warzone with their buddies, you know, three hours a week and buy bundles every time they log on. It could take a lot of them and uh, they would become like Battlefield BR mains with their buddies after they're finished mercilessly maiming their wives. And then yeah. Activision would lose a lot of money and they would want to innovate. Not because they're dead or dying, but because they are, in fact, losing money to another popular BR. I think most studios are not in a position to even be a blip on Activision's Warzone radar. But 
I think EA is one of them. They have well, yeah. billions of dollars. They could do it. Also, so with, that would be really cool. With Omni Movement coming this year, I think this is going to push a lot of casual players away. They're going to be getting destroyed. And players like that, you know, by the end of next year are going to be looking for a different game because they hate Warzone so much um, that, you know, some they could pick up players like that. Because Battlefield in general is a far more casual game than Call of Duty. In fact, 99% of the player base just absolutely terrible. I don't think I've ever queued for Battlefield 2042 and I wasn't in the top three on my team in kills. And some of these guys on my team have 4,000 hours in the game and I have triple their kills every... They're terrible. They're the worst FPS yeah. players. They're so bad, which is why it's a yeah. great casual multiplayer game and it could be a really fun BR. Dude, it would probably not have skill-based matchmaking either because none of their yeah, other stuff wonder, does. But that's because there's I a wonder, server browser system, kind of. True. And also, would there be bots in it? Because Fortnite Surely, does there that. There will be bots, yeah. There are bots and there in multiplayer are bots now. there bots in Battlefield multiplayer, yeah. So if they needed be, to fill a lobby, they would throw bots in, unfortunately. That would be kind of cringe, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dumb. But yeah, the bots are I better than the, the players. Bots. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe I would, yeah, maybe they'd be too twisted, I don't know. Um. So yeah, anyway, that'll be exciting. But when is that... So it's supposedly coming out with the next Battlefield main well, title. Obviously. Who knows if it's when the Battlefield main title comes out, but the main title they're shooting for all it says is 2025. So that sounds like it's set up to not be 2025. Okay. Like they're aiming for it, but it'll probably be 26. Yeah. Like a year at least then. Yeah. So, it's a yeah. ways out. Yeah, it's a ways out. So we'll keep you guys posted, but uh, that's pretty much it. Boys and girls, couple announcements. Uh, welcome back, Drexler, friend of the pod, to the Damascus Lounge, had him at the hangout, we played some trivia games, I won every single time, W Drex, welcome back, good to have you, Chief, on the Patreon in the Damascus Lounge, patreon.com slash drop shop, we are now rolling out our Patreon bonus episodes, by the way, uh, our last one went live, I believe, two days ago, for all of our patrons, and we did another little micro topolo topolopolis episode, micro topics episode. Uh, and we talked about a lot of things, but a couple standouts, building loadouts, some other stuff around that, uh, the advantage, disadvantage of like sniping versus not sniping, playing to win versus playing for kills, why each one is good or bad and why. Um, and then a really interesting topic we spent a good amount of time on actually coming into BO6 is making bad guns viable for doing the camo grind. So if you plan on doing the BO6 camo grind and you want some help uh, util getting the terrible guns that will be in that game, gold or whatever gold, whatever it's called, uh, this would be a good episode for you to listen to because we spend quite a bit of time on that and there will be bad guns that you're going to have to get gold anyway if you want the mastery camo. Yeah. The example, some of the examples we use are like FTAC Recon. Like how do you get that gold? We have tips. Go listen. Uh, Patreon.com slash Adoptshot. Or like the TYR pistol in this game, you know? Or the camo challenge <sighs> where you have to get two kills without letting off the, ma uh, the trigger. That's an annoying camo. We have tips though. Lots of them. Use a bigger mag, obviously, but we have more than that. So anyways, yeah, it was a good episode. We covered other things too, but I, that one's particularly, uh, I think, relevant right now heading into BO6. So give it a listen. If you're a patron, if you're not, become one. Patreon.com slash drop shot. You also get, in addition to those five bonus episodes a month, ad-free and early access episodes for our public ones. All the apps are ad-free. Love you guys. Appreciate you, as the kids say. We will be back on a day, which is Saturday. Early. We'll be on early, by the way. Uh, getting an early start. The early bird gets the worm, Shut as up. they say. Add that to your list. And I love getting worms. Um, pause. I'm a dog. Whatever. Uh, and we're talking about things that are going to be cool. Yeah. Season six more, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's talk about I, especially there. talking about season six after the DTIR nerf. We should have a very good handle on the meta and and how we like it and all that. So we will see you then. I love you and stay humble. Stay humble.